returned once again to another stream of a JoJo Part 5 Golden Wind. We're good to go, we're good to go, we're good to go. So yes, we have returned to episode 37 of JoJo Part 5 Golden Wind. And as we know, actually this happens to be the final, the final JoJo Friday of the whole entire series because this now airs after this point on the Sunday on the 28th of July. So this is actually the final, final JoJo Friday of the whole entire series. And yeah, episode 36 was... Oh! It was good. I just can't wait for episode 37. I really can't. It's just gonna be. It's it's gonna be. It's gonna be glorious. It's gonna be glorious. This episode 37. Oh man. So yeah. So we actually have episode 37 of Judge Part Five: Gone on Wind. Episode 36 was brilliant. I must say, it had a lot going on, especially with the whole idea of fate. It happens to be a very mate. A mate. Yeah. I can't actually speak now. The he is getting to me in England. <laughs> well, yes. The actual fate theme of the whole entire series is actually playing a massive role at this point in the fight between Diablo and everyone else. So I just want to see how this whole entire thing pans out. So anyway, it's actually point to actually gone live. So, gone live. For episode 37 of Jojo Part 5 Golden Wind. And with that, and with that, and with that, I believe they're good to go. But are we though? That is the burning question. On that front, we certainly are. On this front, we certainly are not. What are you doing, Twitch? You're betraying me now. You're betraying me. We're good, to, we're good to go now. So anyway, let's get the show on the road. So in three, two, one. So I start this thing absolutely now. Diavolo. That's not a nice way to start an episode. You do realise. See, the major issue is whole entire fight, what Diablo's just done, which has actually sealed his fate completely. He pissed off Bruno. You do not, you do, you not, you do not piss off the Bruno bad boy, okay? He is the boy, you do not piss him off. Before we begin, we have to, once again, partake in the stroke of the good luck Bruno curtains, because we need all the luck we need right now in Jojo Part 5 Gone on Wind. So we say thank you to the good luck Bruno curtains. Thank you, good luck- Oh! OP has changed! The OP has changed! We have been Jojo'd! It's happening, boys! Jojo is happening! See? It ha happens when you take good th give thanks to the good luck Bruno Curtains. Man, I was actually gonna say some things now, but I can't because it's actually really freaking cool. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's the SFX opening, isn't it? So I say it should be about the time they actually did the SFX opening. I was going to mention the whole thing about fate because fate's a major thing that actually plays in the opening itself, and in a way, Trish actually kind of defied the fate that she actually didn't really have, which is actually kind of cool. Oh man, I love Jojo so much. <laughs> I love Jojo so much. <laughs> oh boy. That was so cool. SFX opening, my boys. SFX opening. Buenissimo. Buenissimo Jojo. I 
At least we still got the other Uno, though. At least we still got the other Uno. I can't imagine it either, to be honest. It's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> been Jojoed, my fam. My fam, you've been Jojoed. My boy, my fam, you've been Jojoed. Oh wow, the animation's amazing. Animation's so freaking good. <laughs> I love him so much. He's just... <laughs> He's so beautiful, I love him so much. But at the same time, yes. My heart. Problem is Bruno's body's dead, so there's that. There's that whole entire thing to contend with right now. Because Doppio's death had a, had a, had a double-edged sword to it as well, because Doppio dies, but technically Bruno's body- oh no. 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 Oh no, please don't. Oh man. Oh no, please don't. That line. No. Is it meant to be a good luck Bruno Curtains? On a good luck morning Bruno Curtains. Oh man. I was just, I, I was just Can we all just can we all just agree Bruno Butcherati is just the best boy in the universe? It's just like, um, just no one contends with the Bruno boy. We love only one boy. Also Bakio as well, because he's good as well. John is also amazing. So is Meester as well. Oh, man. Kind of wish they just, you know. 
Oh no. Oh no. Stop doing this! Oh no. He's so beautiful! He's so beautiful! He's just the most beautiful man in existence! Oh come on! You just, you just, you just, you just, you just, you just, oh, just stop it! Just stop it! He's just the most beautiful man in existence. This was just, just yeah. <laughs> I just, I can't construct a sound to represent my feelings towards that scene because, and I, I, <laughs> that's basically it. To get away from my depression just at this very one point, one thing to note about that scene with um, Bruno's, Bruno's, he's not dead, he's alive, he's just gone somewhere else, he's on holiday somewhere, just, let's, just, let's just all agree on that whole entire front, is the fact that in part 4, um, Araki showed how the, how the ascent to heaven's kind of very, um, not very good, it can be, depending on how you die, because how Rohan dies and goes to heaven, is quite disturbing, but here it's, it's representing like a renaissance painting. How it's meant to be like beautiful and everything like that. It's quite well done. He's not, he's not Diavaruno anymore. He's just Diavolo. He's just an asshole now. A hot asshole, no less, but. Just, 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 um, we all agree that party after doesn't exist, though. He's okay. He's gonna do it. It got half of boys. It's half of them. He pissed off uh, Diablo so much. It's actually in the air now. He's just he's just flying. This is the opposite of nice. This is very much the opposite of nice. This is the opposite of very much nice. I 
I kind of wish Diablo would stop being an arsehole and just be hot instead. But he's just, he's betraying my heart. This is the opposite of nice. This is the opposite of very much nice. He's done it. He did it. He's done. He did. He did the JoJo. The Jojo has happened! He's been Jojo'd! He's got done, Diavolo! You've been done! Absolutely done! And there it is! The Jojo has happened! It's 100% it's here, boys! Here! It's 100% here! There he is! Woohoo! It's hot. You're looking at reality, my boy. This is 100%. IRL stuff, boys. <laughs> it's happening! It's happening! <laughs> I've waited so long for this! <laughs> I've waited! I'm in such depression right now, but at the same time, so hyped! <laughs> He's getting so done right now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes. I'm so, I, I'm, I'm just, oh boy, <laughs> I'm so high right now, <laughs> I've waited so long, oh boy, <laughs> oh my god. You couldn't see it because this is like... The Jojo, Jojo. This is how you Jojo the Jojo of the Jojo. It's a trifecta Jojo. Welcome back to the stand that says, basically says, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the stand so much. Because I couldn't, I couldn't predict it. I was like, because it's like, fuck you, basically. <laughs> Diablo is so angry right now. <laughs> Misa trying as well. <laughs> oh! Oh!
Oh boy. It's happening. It's very much happening at this point. See what I mean? Basically, it's a fuck you stand. <laughs> it's basically fuck you to stand. <laughs> I love it. I have waited so long for this. I could cry right now. Well, here's the, here's the catch here, uh, in Diavolo. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, no! You have to end it there! Why? Oh, my God! Oh! Jesus Christ, my boys. Can you believe it? We're living in a timeline. Clearly, Diavolo isn't! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> I give myself 10 points for that one, it's a good joke. Oh. See, I have to hug. It's the only rem 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 remnants of Bruno I actually have left at this point. Besides, I get a figurine of him, but it's just it's the only thing I have left of him. So I have to, I have to caress the. Caress the um, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny his downfall this whole entire time because he's one of those guys that's like, oh yeah, you know that fate thing? Well, fuck you. And, he, and everyone else is like, well, you know that fate thing? Fuck you also. And it's just, he's like, oh shit. <laughs> Boom. That's basically what happened. That's, the, that's the Judge of Part 5 in a nutshell. It's basically just fuck you. Fuck you, Diablo. <laughs> Oh man, Jesus Christ! That was good. That was fucking good. <laughs> Depressing. Don't get me wrong, because I'm still kind of like it's it's the it's the um like the wavering emotion of being, of being like hype and depressed at the exact same time. Oh man. Oh man. Can you just put Golden Experience Requiem in there? Just just put Golden Experience Requiem at least for God's sake. It just sounds a lot better. Essentially, yeah, it kind of does. He essentially, God's Fans Requiem is kind of his is kind of Diavolo's like, I do not want to see this right now. Get this out of my face, kind of thing. That's it's like the thing he does most despises in life. 
Because, in a way, he's had this whole entire time of being like, oh, I can, I can control your fate, don't get me wrong, you're basically screwed, my boy. But when it comes along and it basically he's like, oh shit, I can't control this, he doesn't know what to do. He's basically, he's lost because this hasn't ever happened before. And it's kind of one of those things that you can see the downfall of, of Diablo's kind of life in a nutshell. How he's built this whole entire, like, ecosystem in a way. Just it come crashing, crashing down. Especially from a fifteen-year-old as well, and also a group, of, a group of just a group of random people as well, <laughs> a group of just just a gang and a fifteen-year-old just take down the whole entirety of a syndicate, and also Diablo at the exact same time. Oh man! <laughs> yeah. But essentially, when you think about it, because a lot of people do in theory say that that in a way, Goldstone's Raccoon is kind of like well. There was no way to kind of undo Diavolo. They actually had to do something else more. But in a way, it kind of makes sense. Like, the whole thing of Goldstone's Requiem makes sense because it's one of those things that how do you one up? Um, how do you one up old um, Diavolo? Because basically, he's kind of invincible. He says it, and it's true. He is invincible. You have to kind of outsmart him in a way somehow or actually have them to actually outbeat him and go experience right it's kind of that it's just kind of cool it's just one of those things i just i'd love it because you actually get to see him basically just break down and actually see everything he once actually kind of um had um had on in life just come crashing down before him like everything that he actually built up comes crashing down everything he believed in comes crashing down in an instant it's one of those things that it's it's kind of cool to see him basically. It's one of those things that um I've come to come to, actually come to appreciate Diablo a lot more in the anime than in the, than the manga series to be honest. Like he's he's kind of he, in a way when you think about it compared to previous JoJo villains he's kind of had the most like tragic kind of uh, downfall in a way because everything he's just built up has just gone boom in his face basically. And it's just one of those things that you, you can you can tell what it can really do to a person. Like you can tell what it can, you can tell what his own beliefs and his own like kind of motives, his own everything does to a person to the point that it deludes him. That he's like, I can't be defeated. I can never be defeated. I'm, I'm the most invincible character. He's kind of like he's he embodies that kind of persona in a way. He embodies the kind of I'm perfect being. Get out of my face, boys. But at the same time. He does it in such a realistic way that it's kind of like you can tell the downfall because in sometimes in other characters in other characters it's just like he dies he gets he gets kind of punched and he's dead, but here it's like you see the eventual downfall of his character as time goes on. Like each kind of each actually each stand at fight in this whole entire part has been that downfall for him. It's actually kind of um, cool. It's like when you think about it, is it lagging? It's not lagging, is it? No, it seems fine. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just Twitch being funny. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those things that I kind of, I kind of, I kind of like it for that reason. Like it's one of those things you get to, you get to see, you get to see, um, you get to, you get to see a person's downfall. Basically, it's, it's, it's interesting from a different perspective. He's just one of those characters that every, every single thing he's done has been undone. Like, and then in the end, it's been undone and completely just erased. Like, just boom, out of here. So it's kind of one of those things. I can't. I kind of. Um, I kind of. I kind of get that reason. I kind of like Diablo's downfall. Like it's just so freaking cool. And he actually lost that person. It maybe had. Maybe if he did have Fury Doppio on his side still, he might have actually won the fight. Who knows? Because there's still there's technically two people at that point. But he didn't kind of bank on the fact that my my beautiful husband would die, and that's actually kind of the downfall as well. When you think about it. So it's just it's it's an interesting fight and the whole thing with Gold Space Requiem as well, which is one of those things. But yeah, I did touch up on it in the actual stream itself, but I thought I'd actually reiterate the actual idea. But in part four, when Rohan dies, uh, when he goes up to heaven you actually see him just combust and actually kind of break apart. It kind of subverts what's otherwise kind of a very like uh, like in a way, um what's the word? Like what's the word? I can't remember how you actually. Uh, what's the word? And what's the, what's the word for it? Kind of, it's I guess religious in a way. Kind of religious iconography. The idea of ascend to heaven. Like in every single painting, if you go to a church, it, you, look, you look up into the sky. You actually always see. There's always this beautiful idea of what 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 that world is like. What what actually happens once you ascend to heaven? But in part four, it's not like that at all because Rohan represents the whole entire idea that it's kind of a disturbing idea. This idea of how you die is the way you actually get to heaven. But then part five comes on and goes, well, no, here's here's how it's meant to be. It's actually kind of nice because it represents a lot of what of the art of that era and also of that country as well. The the whole entire like Renaissance paintings and everything like that. It's very much how Bruno dies. It's very much like a Renaissance painting. It's very much like how a person 
a person would actually see the ascension to ascend ascending to heaven. It's actually kind of cool for that reason. That's why I always kind of appreciate the juxtaposition between both parts because you can see the, how death is represented in both parts. How, in a way, how in a way, I guess the I guess the I guess the idea with Bruno's death is the fact he felt fulfilled. Like he felt like he did something. Each death, in a way, in this part, I guess the nun show as well, maybe. But especially with, especially with Bakio as well. Like he, um, they all accomplished something that actually allowed him to actually ascend to heaven without any kind of regrets. So in a way, that whole entire idea is represented through the uh, through the way they die. Like in essence, with the whole thing with Bakio, him kind of ascend to heaven, and actually then. Um, and then him laying on the laying on the actual kind of clouds. It's it's, it's very much a kind of a um, a beautiful, very depressing, but very beautiful um, way to go out. It's just it's represented quite beautifully. Same thing applies with Bruno. Same thing applies with Bruno. He 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 managed to actually kind of undo what what the Avlo did. She managed to actually kind of accomplish something. Like his death meant something. So it's actually represented in the way he dies. Same thing happens with Anansi as well. It's one of those things that death is represented quite differently in this part. Compared to different parts as well, because different parts it's actually always kind of been one of those things that it's the depressing idea that each character goes. But here it's depressing, but you do get to see what they did in three do to actually get to that point. And so it's actually one of those things that are actually not um, wasted at all, and I actually kind of like it. I thought it's actually a really beautiful way to kind of characterize death, because otherwise death is quite a um, it's it's a very morbid topic. But how Araki does it is quite a, is quite different to what you expect it to actually kind of be. So I do respect him for that. And yeah, I mean. Um, yeah, I just I, I I saw it because I remembered because I talked about it in part the part four stream when Rohan dies like way back when I talked about the fact that he dies in quite a gruesome way. And essentially, the heavens quite gruesome, but here it's completely po it's a complete polar opposite. I always kind of I always kind of thought it was actually kind of a brilliant. Um, it's a very subtly it's a very subtle but brilliant kind of um, way to look at that whole entire idea. So yeah, I mean um, this is the final episode until 20, the twentieth of July, which I'm, which is the day I'm back from Spain actually. I come back the 27th, so the day the day after I come back, we actually have JoJo again. So yeah, I mean, um, I actually hope you actually have enjoyed all the JoJo Friday streams I've done this whole entire time. It's been, it's been an honor to actually kind of to actually kind of share JoJo Fridays with you, and actually hope you enjoy the rest of um, Part Five as well, and also then the subsequent parts as well if they ever get animated as well. Yeah. It's 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 weird because the the way that characters go out is quite gruesome, but the way they're kind of doing free ascend is quite beautiful. It's 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 really kind of um, it's a very weird position, but it works. Same actually, which is we got it back and now it's gone. <laughs> it feels like yesterday episode one aired, and I was screaming that uh, there's Giorno Giovanna, but now we're like it's it's over. Part uh, part five basically comes to an end. I'm just like depressed. I am depressed. But yeah, I mean, let's look on the bright side. We actually got the most beautiful part of JoJo animated, basically. It's actually just been so freaking good. So yeah, I actually have enjoyed these streams. I will be back on 20th to cover episode 38 39. So until then, I've indeed been a driver. So as always, if you have enjoyed this whole entire stream as a whole on Twitch, then do leave a follow on Twitch because indeed it's been quite a bit. If you have enjoyed what I do here on YouTube and you do want to leave a like, then do leave a like because indeed it's been quite a bit. If you have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you do want to stay a bit longer, then do indeed leave a sub because indeed it's been quite a bit. She have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you want to see me long off the whole entire point and see me cry on Twitter and, and Discord about my my husband who's now actually the good luck the good luck morning curtains of Bruno Butcherati. And then doing free follow me on Twitter or jump Discord as well because both both there will tell you when I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, be, I'll be crying all the time. And also when he streams are live as well. And other streams I do as well. But until the 20th of July, episode 38 and 39, I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.